out here on Lake Merval today. about Lake Merval is it's, it's a very intimate setting. You're not sharing the lake with 200 other bass fishermen out here, all going for the same bass that you are. Uh, nothing, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I'm all about a bass tournament. I'm all for a bass tournament just like the next guy. But when you got, when you got six guys within an area of like you know, 150 feet on the same lake. It just makes it really hard. So I like to go to the small lakes. We don't have to fight all that, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to fight it, we can just take our time, catch some fish, and enjoy ourselves. Now whenever I get out to the lake, I don't immediately start casting my reel. As soon as I get out to the lake, I have to entice the fish to come to me. The way I do that is with pedigree small crunchy bites. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of spread them around like we're spreading the wealth and we're going to bring all those fish that don't have good jobs and suck off the government. They're going to come to us and we're going to catch some and then we're going to skin them and eat them. So that's that's what we're going to do first hand. Going to let that sit for just a moment and then we're going to cast some line. Let's cast some line. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Hold on, I'm getting a text. Just a second. Okay, let's see. Yes. The pedigree has been sitting out for long enough where we can go ahead and start fishing this general area here. People question me a lot because I have some real unorthodox methods for catching fish. And that's fine, there's always gonna be plenty of naysayers out there. Now this is a genuine luchador mask from Mexico. So I'm gonna be sure and not lick the inside of it. Now what this will do is keep me from catching any sort of bacteria from the fish that I may catch. Turns out I just had a little bit of seaweed. Not such a big deal. Uh, and that happens from time to time. All you can do is just clear your hook off, throw it out again. Hey there, I guess you know every week we like to read fan mail. So I've got some viewer mail here. First one is from Carol from Fort Lauderdale. Carol writes, Dear Spence, can pigs look up? Well, Carol, that's not exactly a fishing question, but it is a little known fact that pigs cannot look up. We've got one here from James. James is from St. Louis. Andy writes, I've always heard that more people are killed by donkeys than plane crashes annually. Is this true? Well, once again, that's not a fishing question. But yes, 
More people are killed annually by donkeys than plane crashes. Thanks, James. We've got one more here. This is from AT&T, and it's a cancellation notice. Oh, we got a big one there. We'll have to get the net out on this one. When I get out to the lake, I like to grab a cool Dr. Thunder. Dr. Thunder, same great taste as Dr. Pepper, with a hint of oregano. Make it a Dr. Thunder. on the line, you always got to be prepared. Safety is number one. If you don't do anything, it's going to possibly hurt your hand. Right when you're... He's got a big one on the line. Good gosh. He's under the boat. Alright, I'm going to have to get the net out on this one. Oh, man. Alright. Alright, you got into some seaweed. Alright, yeah. Get that seaweed off the line there. Then we'll be able to assess the catch. Yeah. Got a little bass here. Yeah. She's a beaut. She's a beauty fish. Yeah. He bit down on him pretty hard. It's gonna take us a second to get out. Not a bad little catch for the first first one out. Paul, live well. Alright. Now, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to protect your hands. It's a pretty fish. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see it's been hit or miss today. Just hadn't been catching much. The economy's a little slow. Fish aren't out. But that's okay because we like to end every show on a high note. Paul, if you'll man the lure. I like to end every fishing show with a song. Michael Rowe, you boat ashore. Seagulls fly.